So Jandre, Lara, and Danielle, would you guys come on up and visit with us a bit? Thank you for clapping for them. You're gonna wanna clap even more when this is done. So we have, girls, we have two microphones to share between four of you. You just flip it on and off right here. It's pretty simple. Okay. Um, so, oh, okay, I forgot. Danielle had a headache at the last minute and told me that she is not able to come. So I will, I will take care of Danielle's part. Okay, so the first thing I want to uh, comment on is, I don't know about you, but this week I was so struck by all the visiting back and forth between these first century churches. You know, the Philippians were popping over to the Ephesians and they were visiting back and forth. And Paul, of course, was the king of checking in on the churches and visiting back and forth. But it made me think, like, the bride is big. The bride, capital B, she's flourishing. And I think sometimes it can, it, we can be tempted to, to forget that. If our own little place isn't necessarily flourishing, we can be tempted to despair. We can get discouraged like Elijah did. Jane taught us about that a couple weeks ago where you think, am I the only one left, Lord? And he, what did he say to Elijah? Do you guys remember? Oh, come on, you chickens. <laughs> what, sorry? Remnant. Exactly. He preserved his remnant. He said, don't worry, I've preserved 7,000 who have not bent their knee before Baal. And that is what we're going to be reminded of today because these little darlings over here, they used to be among us. They used to study with us. But they're still ours. They still belong to us. So I'm going to start on the far right with Lara McAllister. And she reminded me today that it's Lara, like rhyming with Sarah, okay? So, Lara, would you just give us a, like, tell us, tell us why it is you don't study with us anymore. Tell us, and then this is really important to me, would you please at the end, um, tell us what you need, your new little study placement. What do you people need? Okay. Well, I'll give you just, like, a teeny tiny history of how long I've been part of your, your group here. So, I started studying precept with Jen in her living room, I want to say, like, 10 years ago. I don't, I don't know how, it's, it seems like a good round number. Um, and over the years, I've been part of this group, the Thursday morning group, as well as Monday evening, just because of various work schedules. Um, so I feel like I, this is like, I don't know, I feel like you guys have just been my precept family. Um, but about a year ago, I was co-leading with Ange Hills, um, and she is incredible. I don't know, if you ever get to study with her, she's amazing. Uh, and I started feeling this little nudge uh, from God to maybe take this to my home church. So some of you may not know, this is not my home church. I actually attend Emmanuel Fellowship Baptist Church over near High Street. And my pastor had always jokingly said to me, so when are you bringing precept to Emmanuel? And I was just like, oh, haha, ha, you're funny. Like, I could never do that. <laughs> And yeah, about a year ago, I just felt like there was this little nudge by God in my heart, and he was just saying, it's time, it's time. And I, I started praying about it. I didn't, didn't tell many people that I had this little nudge. And uh, last spring, March, April-ish, I had a girl from our church uh, send me a random message, and she said, I hear you study precept at Northview. Would you ever think about leading it here at Emmanuel. And I was like, oh dear. Um, and I said, actually, I, I've been praying about it. And so I thought maybe, maybe this is God's way of saying, yep, it's time. And I had another girl come to me and ask me a similar thing. And so I, I went to my pastor and I said, okay, I, I think I'll do it. I think I'll start in September. And he was excited and, um, so last July, I put it out there to our church. It had been, we have, we have nothing like this at our church. Um, and through COVID, we've really had nothing at all. Uh, so I put it out there, um, <laughs> not really sure if anyone would sign up. And to be honest, there's a teeny tiny part of me that thought if no one signs up, I can just go back to Northview and it'll all be good. <laughs> Um, but people did sign up. I had 18 ladies sign up uh, the first, our uh, first semester of doing Acts, or first part of Acts. And you guys, I have to tell you, these girls are amazing. Um, 
some of them showed up not even knowing what precept was, not even knowing that they had so much homework to do every week. <laughs> um, but they come week in and week out and they do their homework. And these girls are, the majority of them are younger than me. They're in their 20s and their 30s and they've got busy lives. They've got careers and families and oh, they teach me so much every week. They're so smart. They're so smart, these girls. And um, yeah, it, it has just been the most incredible blessing to do this. Uh, and God has met me every single step of the way. Uh, I, if I could encourage you, if you feel like God is nudging you in the tiniest little way, it might be to co-lead a group or lead a group or invite a neighbor to come out and do precept with you, listen to that nudge. And I will tell you, if you take any step into leadership with Northview here, you will have the absolute best team supporting you. This group of ladies have blessed me so much. Their encouragement, their leadership, their help, their prayers have been the most amazing. So thank you to the leadership here. Thank you to all of you who support us. Whether you know it or not, you support us so much. Um, yeah, so thank you. What do I need? Oh. You know what, if I had to pick, um, I, don't have, I don't really have a helper right now um, because many of these girls are brand new to this. I have a few in mind that I think would do a really, a really good job at maybe co-leading with me or just um, helping me out from time to time. So I would pray that um, one of these girls, um, I shouldn't say that, I actually do have a lady who helps with some admin things. So. Uh, but as far as leading goes, I'd love someone that I could, you know, if I were sick, that I could just call and be like, hey, do you think you could lead this week? Um, yeah, so a, co a co-laborer in Christ with me. <laughs> that, is, that is a really very excellent request. That's, that sounds hard, thinking you're on duty 100% of the time. But the Lord has preserved you through sickness, and so far so good. Okay, thank you for sharing, Lara. Love to hear that. Uh, do you want to pass your mic over to Miriam? Um, one thing I really like about Miriam is her name is spelled Merjam. Merjam. Is that the Hebrew spelling? Did you tell me that one time? So that's super cool, right? So these two girls are like crazy cool. Um, we have a leader in our midst who calls these guys the soldier moms. Um, soldier moms, would you tell us what you do and why it is you don't study with us any longer? Miriam really doesn't like being up here. She even organized for my children to be taken care of so that I could come so she wouldn't be by herself. <laughs> um, yes, we, um, I haven't been with Precept super long uh, since my first was born, so three years. And then, of course, we went into COVID, so I didn't even get to meet so many of you lovely ladies. Um, whereas Miriam's been with you a bit, a bit longer. Um, and yes, we just uh, did not want to lead a group at all. Um, we were dragging our feet for a lot of conversations, but feeling like it would be really great, especially for moms. So we have a young moms group, um, or mom of littles, lots of littles. So we have, I think, is it 11 or 12 women and 17 children, four and under. Um, it's, as you can imagine, oh yes, all in Miriam's living room. It is a little chaotic and loud and messy, and the girls have been so gracious because uh, there's a couple who are, yes, very, like, are part of Precept and are such, like, good studiers and I'm sure appreciate much juicier, more focused discussion than we're able to provide. Uh, but they're so gracious and keep coming back and um, come for the connection. And um, I was just, yeah, telling, <laughs> telling Jen earlier, Miriam and I had this uh, plan for you know, we're going to like worship and we're going to do prayer and we're going to do um, discussion and we're going to listen to a teaching. And like our, our plans were very quickly thrown to the side and we've stripped it down to the essentials. Um, and one of the things that we love, so we do a little bit of worship. Right now, um, Miriam's on piano, sometimes with little children, right, crawling up there and banging on the piano along with her. Um, and a little bit of prayer. And then we just share LFLs. Um, that's kind of what we're able to do, but that's one of the favorite things that we loved about Precept. Um, and I know when I first started, and I didn't even do the study, I didn't even buy it, so I didn't even open it or anything, and I just came. And I would just listen to you ladies share uh, what you're gleaning from the Word. At the time, it was kinks, and I was like, how are these ladies getting all of this 
from this. Um, and it just really um, gave me actually the, yeah, something to take into my week, because I just had nothing. I was just really stripped and a new mom and overwhelmed. And um, so, yes, I really appreciate that. And it's obviously uh, definitely stirred me to get into the word. And that's just what we want for the women in our group, just to encourage them and um, just to share with one another. And I think it's going well. It's getting a little better every week as we kind of tweak things. Um, but yeah. Um, Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, basically we just do post-it notes. Um, <clears throat> very simple, come with your notes and your thought and then it's there because moms keep on getting called out of the room and having to go tend to their littles. So um, that's what we've been trying is just to have all the thoughts there and we can take a picture and send it. But um, I'll just add maybe um, one thing that Jandre and I have often talked about is the Acts Church and just our heart for the um, the genuine, authentic fellowship that you see in Acts. So when Acts came up as being the book to be studied, I was really excited um, just to delve into that more and, and see what that looks like here. Um, because we have so many distractions and so many other things that get in the way very easily. And so then <clears throat> with everything COVID, um, we quickly found that one thing that was actually hard to do um, was just being in fellowship and um, engaging young moms, especially because of childcare needs and all that. So um, that's been one of the reasons why we just wanted to start a living room, living room fellowship, just to invite people into this, um, yeah, this idea of what, what might the ACT Church have looked like with all the little kids running around, because I'm sure they didn't have childcare. Um, <laughs> so, and I think that's probably what it was. It was messy and it was loud and it was, um, unstructured and uh, oftentimes we just start at 9 30 and end whenever the kids melt down um <clears throat> that's 11 20 11 30. Yes, it's pretty much like always the same time so that's been working pretty well for us but yeah we tweak every week and it's different every week and um but we just show up and we pray that god will use the time that we have and um that i mean he can he can do amazing things with even just a few minutes so um, we really are relying on him to bring something about in these women's lives. Oh, doesn't that sound amazing? Like, come on. I, I was saying to Jandre, I've said this to Marion before too, like, I wish I had started studying when I was their age, like diligently in the Word. Can you imagine what my family would look like today? <laughs> Maybe there'd be less fighting. I don't know. <laughs> Girls, what do you need? What does your group need? Um, I would say definitely just prayer, um, especially for, for pockets of peace, <laughs> um, for the Holy Spirit to just bless us with what does not make sense with um, 10 to 17 kids, um, just so that we are able to have, yeah, um, just the most productive uh, time with the time that we are able to have. Uh, and uh, one of the other thoughts we had, you want to? Sure. Yes, this was actually Nicola's wonderful idea. Um, if... Uh, having said that we love having the kids running about our feet, which really is great, but they, it would be amazing if there was um, uh, maybe an older high school, homeschool girl or some, someone who might want to come and just do something with the kids or engage them in some way, um, just to give a little bit of structure for them, um, not to take them away, but just to have them also have something to work on. Um, if you know of someone who might be interested in getting involved in that way and serving, then that would be amazing. That sounds awesome. Thank you for sharing with us, you guys. Thanks for coming back to visit. Do it again, okay? <laughs> okay, if you want to shut your mics off, you can, you can leave now. Thank you, girls. We love you. Okay, and just to keep along this theme, we have um, a couple of other little groups that have shot off from our midst and are flourishing elsewhere. So we have, um, I never know how to say her last name. You remember our Danielle, who we love so much, Danielle taught us from up here. Is it Erber Weir? Erber Weir, Danielle Erber Weir. So she went in September off to the Mission Campus and they have started a wonderful little group over there. She got a headache at the very last minute this morning, so I, I asked for a text to update us. 
And this is, this is what she says. This is how the mission precept group is doing. Since September, we've been meeting weekly as a core group of about 15 to 18 women, morphing out of a women's study and a care group that started about 15 years ago, but which only met every other week. It has now grown into a precept discussion group. September through November, we completed Joshua, and we are now midway through Mark, and we are going to dig into Galatians next. The women are doing well, especially considering that members of the previous group didn't do study homework midweek and in between the gathering times. And so what she asks for from us is prayer. I love how these ladies all know to ask for that, right? Like, man, we're lost without it. Um, she says, for prayer, that he would encourage each of the women in our group to persevere. The homework commitment is something that a few are struggling with, but so far they're hanging in there. Also, that they would see how truly worthwhile their time in the Word this way, how it brings glory to God, and how it transforms lives. She said, I haven't uh, started registration for Galatians yet, but she's trusting him to fill the seats, so to speak, and that's her task for next week. So let's pray for those girls over there. Um, that's a really special thing that's going on over there. And that's a unique challenge where you take a, an original group and say, hey, guess what, guys? I know you don't do homework, but we're going to start doing it from now on. And they've been gracious as the day is long, and they're wrapping their brains around it. Uh, sorry for all my puffing. Um, and then the other uh, little update I wanted to give you is, do you remember long ago, I think it was when we studied in April's basement, we had a little Chilliwack contingent go out from our midst. It was originally my sister-in-law, and um, they haven't written me back to give the exact details of the update, but uh, they're flourishing over there too. Um, the last I heard, I don't really know how COVID has affected this, they had two groups going at Chilliwack Alliance Church. They had a morning group and an evening group, and they were deep in the word of the Lord and, and flourishing. In addition to that, they also have sort of, um, my sister-in-law, I think, leads it, and she calls it the Band of Bandits. Um, they don't meet as often because they are um, ladies at an older life stage, and they do a lot of traveling. I think they're snowbirds. But I think she told me they're studying Malachi right now. So the bride is big. The bride is flourishing. Um, he has kept 7,000 of his own people from bending their knees before Baal. I don't know about you. That makes me feel so good. S Pardon me? Oh, yes, of course. What am I thinking? Thanks, Jane. Um, I did also invite uh, Jen Hebert, who would love to have been here and said, please invite me again, but she double booked herself. So, yes, uh, I asked Ange Hills, and she said she thinks they have around 25 girls in their roster, and they are studying via Zoom. Uh, they're doing acts the same way we are. So, like, if you invite someone to this group and it doesn't work for whatever reason, keep in mind these other beautiful options. We're not territorial around here. We just want sisters in Christ studying the Word of God, and we don't care where that is. So, I thought it would be great if we took a moment to pray for these groups. Will you please bow your heads together with me as we do that? Father, you are so good. You're so gracious. You take care of your own. I just love these stories, Father, that just remind us we're not alone here. Um, we are but one small group in this corner of the kingdom, but the bride worldwide, the bride in the lower mainland, the bride is flourishing and you're taking care of her. Um, I pray that you would continue to do it. I pray that we would marvel at what you do in our midst. I pray that only you would get the glory. I pray that the stories would be impossible ones and yet true, and so that only you, Jesus, would get the honor and the glory for them. Um, we love you. We want to, um, we want to see your, your fame spread. We want to see your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And we're so reassured, Lord, to know that the king is in his throne. You're superintending all of it, and I just pray that you would surprise each of these leaders represented today with joy. I always think of that book by C.S. Lewis and the title of it, Lord, Surprised by Joy. I pray that you'd surprise these girls with joy. I pray that you'd surprise them with your abundant intervention, which is more than they even know now today to ask for or imagine. 
be glorified, O King, and use us. Use us to strengthen the souls of the disciples. Use us to be like um, a flame that the moths come to. I pray that each of these groups would be beautified and better. I pray that you'd convict sisters of sin, that you'd correct them and reprove them and train them in righteousness. I pray that all of the women represented would um, be made perfect as their Lord Jesus is perfect. So we praise you. We thank you in advance for what we know you will do. You're the one who calls us. You're the one who's faithful. And you're the one who will surely do it. And so we pray these things in your name with great hope. Amen. All right, so I'm going to try a handheld mic here instead. Sorry for all that puffing. Um, uh, slide, yep, she's on it. Oh, and you know what? I meant to change that subtitle. I cha changed it at the last minute, and then I forgot to send the updated version to Hannah. So just ignore that Antioch part. It's just basically lessons, lessons from Acts. Because weirdly, even though we studied Acts chapter 20 this week, we're going to mainly focus in on Acts chapter 2. Um, this is what I know, want to know from you guys. What does church life look for you of late? Do you know that it isn't altogether accurate to say that you go to church? More accurately phrased, we would say, you, in the gathered assembly of your brothers and sisters in Christ, you are the church. Church is not a building. Church is a gathering of saints. And I thought days three homework was so illuminating for us on this point this week. So hear me first and foremost. Far be it from me to dictate to you what exactly church -like should look like. I'm not a magician who can read minds and hearts and life circumstances. I don't like how vast chunks of the church is yet scattered and not quite yet gathered. But you may well have things to wrestle out that I know not of. Um, and so what I can say with authority and truthfulness and confidence is if you're not gathered back among us, we just miss your face, that's all. We hope you come back soon. We look forward to the day when the church is formally gathered together again. I miss the tangible gathering, and it made me think of this really cute thing my, my second, or my, my firstborn son used to say when he was a little guy. Uh, he adored his father and does to this day, and he'd always run eagerly up to Trevor, and he'd say, oh, we're together, right, Dad? <laughs> Everything was just, I need to be together with Dad. And that's how we feel about you guys who are not here yet. We're not mad at you. We understand you've got stuff to wrestle through that we don't. But just come back soon. Come back as soon as you can, okay? We're keeping your, seat, your seats here warm and ready for you. Don't feel weird about it. Come back when you can. Um, Hannah, could we have slide two, please? As I mentioned, we're going to mainly camp in Acts chapter 2 this week. So, if you've got your Bible, why not open that up? We'll read through a portion of it together. Today I'm not going to make you stand because I realized I make you stand and then I say open your Bible, right? That's, that's, that's tricky to do both simultaneously. So we're going to focus mainly on Acts chapter 2, verses 41 to 47 this morning. And it starts like this. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings, and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Exquisitely beautiful. I know we've studied this already, and yet even as I did again this week, the Holy Spirit brought new whoppers for me to understand. And I thought, how did I miss that the first time through? 
So I hope that you will feel similarly. I hope there's something new for you to learn today. If we could have slide number two, please. What can we learn from this passage? This is unbelievable to me, and I this just zinged over my head the first time. Uh, do you notice in verse 41, it says they received his word. They received his word. So what do you think that implies? They weren't just hearers of the word. Of course, this makes me think of the book of James, where those of us who studied it together were privileged to learn that we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only, because when we do that, we deceive ourselves. I think it's fascinating to note here that James is not writing to unbelievers when he talks about that. He's writing to Christians, and actually, he's writing to what we today would call Bible study people. I find that remarkable. Bible study people can and do miss the point, sometimes for decades. It makes me think of the, the Jews, very familiar with the scriptures, waiting for their Messiah, and then missing him while he was right there under their noses, even though they had read all the Old Testament prophecies about who he was and what he would look like and what he would not look like, and they missed him. They were looking for somebody different. They were hearers of the word only and not doers. So in other words, information is of no use if there's no application of it. The two have to go hand in hand. James describes a man that hears the word only in this manner. And so for our purposes today, let's pretend that he's describing a woman. Listen to James 1, 23 and 24. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, she is like a woman viewing her natural face in a mirror. She views herself and she goes her way and immediately forgets what kind of woman she was. James describes a man or a woman that is not only a hearer but also a doer like this. If we skip to verse 25, it says, But whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this woman will be blessed in all that she does. So what kind are you? I know there are both kinds here. I know it, just statistically. There must be. Do you come to Bible study and think, yes, yes, that was so good, and then you go home and you forget everything you just learned? I think there's a good example for us in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. It says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat from it you will surely die. Adam heard what God said about not eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He heard it, all right. But he did not apply obedience to what he heard. He forgot what he heard, and then he did what he wanted. So the word of God was not properly applied. He heard it, but then he went and did the opposite of what it said. We can't blame this one just on Adam. If I'm completely honest with myself, I've done the same thing. I feel that nudge of the Holy Spirit that Lara talked to us about, and I ignore it. I push it on the back burner. So Adam's actions produced the result of one who heard and did nothing about it, he was disobedient in not applying the word he heard from the Lord, and it brought not about a blessing, but a curse, which was called sin on all of humanity. So where are you at with what God has spoken to you in his word? We are utterly wasting our time if we are wallowing still at jerks, as jerks, sorry, in our private lives. Do you yell at your kids? Do you swear angrily at your husband sometimes? You're not alone, I assure you. But we should be the sweetest people there ever were to live with. In Christ, we should be sweet and then sweeter. And we're never going to be perfect. You're always going to mess up while you're yet here in this earthly body. But are you growing in your sweetness? What would your husband say about his precept wife? Okay. Have you studied the Bible for years now? And yet, in those moments of solitude and complete honesty, do you note that maybe your fruit isn't lush and growing? 
Would the people who know you best testify that you're a bit of a jerk still? Or would they say, my mom, my sister, or my wife, she is a saint. So do you and the holiness you display through the power of the Holy Spirit make people intrigued about this Jesus you serve? They received his word. That sounds like really good soil, doesn't it? All right, point number two. Together, together, together. Did you notice that? Did you mark the word together? It's everywhere, peppered through. They even had all things in common. They attended the, or sorry, they attended the temple together. Do you fellowship still? Is it a priority in your life? In my lifetime, Hebrews 10.24 has never packed a bigger punch. Listen carefully to what it says. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Do you think the day is drawing near? I think so. Do not try to do this marathon by yourself. You're crazy to attempt it. And in the event that we should need some Old Testament substantiation, I just found this this week. Psalm 122 verse 1 says this. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Is this maybe a little bit like saying today, oh, I love it when my friend invites me to church. When she's there with me, I'm happier. Or I love being with my sisters as I gather to study the word of God so that we can know him better together. Do you gather? Do you model gathering to your children and to the watching world? And I'm not saying there's only one way to gather. If you haven't come back yet, though, when will you come back? I know people who are past tense permanently church attenders, and I think it likely that you do too. Don't, don't be of their ilk. Are your children essentially unchurched by now? Is Sunday now ski day in their little minds? If this is you, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit would make alarm bells go off in your heart. Because when we gather, one of the benefits is we are reminded about the love and the good works. We share stories. One of my besties told me animatedly this week on a hike about how she preached the gospel to her grandma on her deathbed. And hearing of God's triumphant intervention and faithfulness made me want to go call my great aunt and share with her the same good news. It's galvanizing. It's faith-bolstering to hear these kinds of stories, watching your sisters be faithful. Another one of my friends is a true example to me in humble submission. I am many things, girls, but if you don't know it by now, I am not humble and I am not submissive. My friend makes me want to be a better woman. I'm inspired to be more like her. So do you gather regularly? with Christ as your central point. That can look a lot of different ways, I think. And this sort of streamlines beautifully, I think, to bring us to my next point. Have someone over. Did you notice that they were always breaking bread together in their homes and elsewhere? And so here's my question to you today. Who could you have over? It makes me sad because even before COVID, my personal observation is that we don't, as a modern Western church, we don't do this with the same fervor and intensity that these guys did. Fight the Pinterest lies. I'm preaching to myself every bit as much as I'm preaching to you today. Do you know what? Your house is good enough. Think of what those first century homes looked like. They didn't have plumbing for Pete's sake. Are you the kind of person who always excuses yourself from this duty by saying to yourself, I just don't have the gift of hospitality? Or, when we get a bigger or a newer house, then I'll start having people over. 
One of my favorite friends once commented to me that nobody wants to come over to your house if you have ever-perfect vacuum lines. <laughs> I want to tell you a story of probably the most hospitable person I ever knew. And I want to say it carefully because I'm going off manuscript, and you know me when I do that. It's my mother-in-law, and she has since gone to paradise to be in the presence of the Lord Jesus. So I hope I can honor her in the way that I describe her exemplary gift of hospitality. Here's the thing. Mom Thronus was not a very clean lady. When you would open her covers in the kitchen, they were all greasy around the, the handles. Mom Thronus, with all due respect, was the worst cook I have ever experienced in my life. Without joking or exaggerating, I'm being careful right now in my heart. My husband would sometimes give a side whisper to me as we were sitting at our table saying, don't eat the peas, they're moldy. <laughs> Often our entree for uh, a weekend lunch would be a can of salmon plopped out onto a tabletop retaining its exact can shape. But you know what? When you went to Mom Thronus' house, you knew to your bones that you were welcome. She was very cute, especially before we had kids. We spent a lot of time over there, and she'd say, oh, sit down, Jen. Your eyes are tired. Let me do for you. And you would revert back to childhood and think, yeah, I do need somebody to do for me, now that you mention it. Christian hospitality is not conflated with Pinterest or Instagram perfect lives. Be real, share your real self with others, and invite someone over. I'm gonna have to fast forward this talk because look at the time. Um, the next point is they had all things in common. Now that's a wow. I love the way Paul is always so busy about the business of taking aid to the saints. It's so cool to note that in Paul's third missionary journey, that it is the Gentile Christians sending aid to who? The Jewish Christians. That would be a glorious display of unity. That would have been humbling for those Jews. They have come from this paradigm where they were God's chosen people, they and they alone, and now here they are in need of aid from the Gentile saints. They're loving each other. In Acts 2, we read of the earliest Jewish Christians receiving their food with glad and generous hearts. Isn't this an illuminating little point? They received with glad and generous hearts. It doesn't say that they gave with ge glad and generous hearts, although we know love, the Lord loves a cheerful giver also. They received with glad and generous hearts, which compels me to ask you, how are you at receiving? Could we have our next slide, please, Hannah? This is a little meme I, I found this week that kind of made me laugh. Which is the hardest for you to say? Number one, I love you. Number two, I was wrong, I'm sorry. Number three, I need help. Number four, Worcester sauce, is that right? Worcester? <laughs> Number five, I appreciate you. Number six, my conspiracy theorist friend was right. <laughs> Do you know that when you try to do everything for yourself through life, that you withhold blessing from others? When you need something, it blesses your sisters to get to know about it. I just gave a good friend of mine a rebuke recently because she had COVID and I didn't even know it. I said, next time, tell me. It brings me joy to make soup. And when you share your needs with your sisters, they are then freed to fan their beautiful gifts into flame, given to them by the Lord Jesus, to minister to you. And we learned this week that it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Don't be that person who needs to do everything for herself at all times. This week, how could you take aid to the saints? Before we press further, I want to say here that our hearts and motives on this point really matter. We need to first understand that our best works, wrongly oriented before our Father, are described in Scripture as filthy rags. Did you know that? Isaiah's not talking about our sin. He's talking about our acts of righteousness outside of Christ. 
Those are filthy rags. And I always thought that was a compelling verse, but I did a little bit of a deeper study this week, and I found that it's actually more shocking than I knew. Oh, my goodness, you girls. The word filthy is a translation of the Hebrew word ida, which literally means the bodily fluids from a woman's menstrual cycle. These are the Jews describing it in this way. They viewed menstruation differently than we do today. You had to go outside of the camp for a week. Uh, I think it's a week's duration. I shouldn't go off manuscript because I'm making this up now. A good chunk of time. They were literally considered unclean. They couldn't be in relationship with their husbands and children during this time. This is gross. These are our righteous acts, wrongly oriented before the Father. So, our righteous acts are considered by God as repugnant, as a soiled feminine hygiene product. The Holy Spirit, and only the Holy Spirit, makes our acts of righteousness fruitful, loving, and pleasing to himself. Long ago, I learned, thankfully, because the gospel was preached in its purest form to me, I learned that it is the Lord and the Lord alone who authors salvation. But in recent years, I've learned something else. I know I harp on it all the time, but my family prayer for this year is Isaiah 45, 8, and it says this, Shower, O heaven, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Let the earth cause them both to sprout. I, the Lord, have created it. Only the Lord. Did you hear that? Salvation and righteousness both are authored by him. I love Revelation 19.8 to this point, which, when talking about the bride of Christ, says this, It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. It was granted to her. It's a privilege to get to perform righteous acts in the bride of Christ. You know you can never earn his love or his forgiveness or his mercy, don't you? So truly good acts are initiated by him, fueled by him, and completed by him. And so what we do is out of a joyful gratitude, we say, thank you, Lord, for giving me this chance to minister in this way. And so we heard some needs talked about here on the stage. Maybe the Holy Spirit is pressing on your heart, and maybe you want to catch one of those cute girls before they leave at the end of study today and let them know that you might be the exact right girl for the meeting of some of those needs. Okay, you guys, we're on point three out of, what did I say, six? And we're going to actually stop now, as is my want. We'll talk more later, but I want us to do something really special right now. I want to invite up to the stage our Judy, our Christina, our Carla Cornelius, which is one of the funnest names in the world to say, Carla Cornelius. I want to invite Jen Good up front, please. Uh, I think we won't stand, ladies, so what if we all kind of stood side by side up here? Uh, maybe grab that mic. Um, do I have everybody? Oh, uh, Sylvia Friesen, too, please. Would you ladies come on up? So what I ask these girls to do is I ask them to close us in prayer because the church needs prayer. The bride needs God's help. And so I ask them to pray for us their answers from number five in day three's homework. I thought that would be the perfect way for us to end. And so um, why don't we start with Carla, and we'll just go in order to simplify things and hand the mic down. Is that okay? Does that sound good? Thank you so much for being willing to do this, ladies. One of you, and I, I won't mention her name, but oh my goodness, this made me like her way more than I did before. I invited her, and she gave me all the beautiful words. Oh, Jen, that's such a great idea. Love it, love it, love it. Let me be very clear with you. A solid no. <laughs> all explanation marks. So that made me very happy. I've reread that text many times this week. But these are the five who said yes. So will you please bow your heads in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, God on your throne, we are so grateful to be sitting here again today. We just, we just don't even know how lucky we are. Um, we're so thankful for the Holy Spirit working among us. And we're thankful that when we look back to what these 12 little disciples did, um, 
what a mustard seed it was, and then what it has turned out to be today, your church all over the world. It's just absolutely amazing and so beyond anything we could ever accomplish. And we're just so grateful that we can see just how good you are and how faithful you are. Lord, we pray for your church today. We wonder, what do you think of your church? Is this what you wanted from us? Are we getting any of it right? And Lord, we ask for a critical spirit in us to discern, but not to be a critical people, and that we will be encouragers of our leadership, and that we will aim for unity and aim for being perfect in your eyes, no matter what the cost. Lord, your mercies are new every morning, and we are so grateful. My only heart's cry with, uh, with my sisters is that you would give us revival, that you'd send your Holy Spirit. We don't even know when we're off unless your Holy Spirit shows us. We are dependent upon you. But Father, just as you stir us, we want to obey. As quickly as you stir us, we want to be obedient. Praise you, Lord, because of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we see in the early church that these believers were a close-knit bunch. They had love for one another. They had love for one another that was radiantly beautiful. We thank you for this inspirational snapshot of how gorgeous your bride can be, even in troubled times. May it inspire us today in 2022 to move as one body towards authenticity, true friendship, and generosity towards one another. In a divisive time. Knit us together in your Holy Spirit as only you can. Grow us together into the church you want us to be. God, I'm incredibly grateful that we have this opportunity right now to be looking in on your new church of believers in the book of Acts. And especially right now is you are well aware of the challenges that our church has experienced over the last little while. And... God, just in the um, coming together again, um, so clearly you showed us, first of all, through Paul, the passion that he had for the testimony of your, uh, your grace and your, the truth of um, just the simple gospel message of Jesus coming in our place and dying and rising again, and then the gift of your spirit that you have brought to us. God, may we just um, have that passion birthed within us, and then as a church, um, the compassion that we just again saw among the gathered believers. Um, may we uh, have humility among us, God, so that in our coming together, it is all about you and the t testimony of you. May we represent ourselves well to the watching world um, as um, they are always there, and we are called to be your witnesses. So, God, may we represent that well as your church of believers. In Acts 20, the believers knelt together and prayed. And as we finish, if you're able, will you please kneel with me right at your chairs? Oh, Father. This is the church right here that you've given us. And this is the, the place where you've called us to be. And we humble ourselves and we say, Father, you are the one who has paid for the church. You have bought it with your precious blood. And so, Lord, we come so humbly and we say, Father, forgive us for not being the church that you have called and imagined. And yet, you give us your Holy Spirit and you transform us through your word. And so we just come humbly asking that you will make us into the church that you have created us to be. And we pray that the prodigals will come home. All of those who have heard and who know, when we pray together asking that you will bring their hearts home and back to you. And Lord, that we may see the power 
of the Holy Spirit. And as we read through Acts and the signs and wonders, may we see the power of God transforming our lives, first our lives, and then spilling over into our families and our neighbors. May your kingdom come and your will be done. Thank you, Lord, for your church. Thank you for how you love it and have paid for it. And may we walk humbly and say, Lord, come and work through us. And we pray this in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.